Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the analysis of panel data using the GEE pack and MESS packages in R. GEE is referring to Generalized Estimating Equations. This approach provides a flexible strategy for modeling predictive relationships when working with panel data, that is, cases that are cross-sectional but contain repeated measurements. Link functions allow one to model one's data assuming various distribution types such as Gaussian, binomial, Poisson, etc. So in this, in this manner, GE can be utilized with various types of dependent variables such as those that are continuous, binary count, and so forth. Also note that when you're using GE, you will want to specify a working correlation structure in order to account for correlated observations over time. So for this presentation, let me also note that uh, this text file that I have open, I'm going to make available to you for download underneath the video description. So in that contains uh, various uh, pieces of information, including syntax and links and so forth. So we're not going to be able to cover everything uh, that's contained in this particular text file, but I wanted to make it available to you so that you can follow up. So um, if you haven't already done so though, for this demonstration, you'll want to install the GEE pack using the install packages function. And you'll also want to uh, install the mess pack or, uh, in order to, um, to utilize that particular package as well. So we're also going to be utilizing data that is actually found in the PLM package. Um, so the data set itself is called Grunfeld. And what we'll do is first off we're going to use the library function to call up that data to call up the PLM package so I'm going to just type in library then PLM and hit enter and so there we are and then I'll type in data and inside quotation marks Grunfeld and hit enter there and if we want to take a quick look at the structure of the data uh, we'll just use the structure function str and then Grunfeld and there we go and so you can see in this data set that we have uh, firm, that's basically our, our case, our subject. We have year is basically reflecting time. Then we have uh, INV, I, I'm assuming that's investment, uh, value, and capital. And so our dependent variable in our models is going to be value. And we're going to have uh, this investment and capital variable. Both of these are going to be time varying predictors in our models. So for the first model, what we're going to do is utilize the GEE GLM function associated with the GEE pack. So we need to first off call up the pack or, or the, the package. So I'm going to type in library and GEE pack so that it is now active in memory. And next up, as I said before, the GEE GLM function is associated with this particular pack. And basically, in laying out the regression, it's very much like what you would do in a standard least squares regression using the LM function in R. So and what I mean by that is, is that you have the dependent variable, in this case value, being a function of the independent variables. The independent variables are separated by a plus sign, and then the tilde is just um, designating uh, the are demarcating the dependent variable on the on the left and the independent variables on the right. You'll see that I'm using the data argument here to um, identify the data frame with containing the data, which is Grunfeld. Uh, family is set equal to Gaussian because we're going to assume that our value variable is um, continuous, normally distributed. ID is basically um, referring to an index variable, which is going to be firm. And then right here, this is ref reflecting correlation structure, and it's set uh, as independence. So basically the analysis is going to be uh, housed or the results of the analysis is going to be housed in an object called GEE model 1 and then right here we're using the summary function in order to look at our results so I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into R so that we can take a look at it so I'm going to hit enter right here and so now you can see that we have everything that we had just typed in um, we have our coefficients, including the intercept and our individual predictor variables right here. And then so we have our estimates, standard errors, wall test results, and p-values that are given. 
and there you go. So that's basically the first model. Uh, next up, what we'll do is we'll run a second model, but in this case, we're just going to change the correlation structure to exchangeable. So this is going to be the only difference from the syntax above, um, and we'll also create a, a second object called GE Model 2, and we'll also look at it using the summary function. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in as well and hit enter, and so now you can see that we have the results from that particular analysis. So for the third analysis, what, we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to change things up a little bit and use the Poisson family. So um, for this particular demonstration, we'll have to actually change the value variable so that it is read as an integer. So um, in the original data set, uh, value was a non-integer. So what we're going to do in this particular case in order to accomplish this is we're going to create another data object uh, called GR data, and we're just going to convert the value variable so that um, there are no decimal places. So uh, first off, this is just reading the Grunfeld data into the data object. Uh, basically, it's going to be an, another data frame. On this line right here, I've got GR data, which is the name of our object, a dollar sign value, and we're changing um, the, that particular variable by rounding um, the values on that and then we'll take a quick look at the, re the remaining data set. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in as well and so now you can see that in this case value uh, there are no decimal places for any of, of the um, any of the values on that particular variable. So now let's create a GEE model 3 and in this case, we're going to uh, leave everything the same as it was in model two. But in this case, we're going to use uh, we're going to set the family equal to Poisson. So now let's just uh, copy this and paste it in and hit enter. And so now you can see that we've run our analysis um, assuming a Poisson uh, distribution. Okay, so uh, a lot of this information is covered in much more detail. Um, uh, within uh, the um, basically within the GEE pack manual which can be uh, located right here there's some additional inf information on uh, the correlation structure some nice reference material here and then some other material right here um, on generalized estimating equations so also in terms of model comparison uh, what we can use is the QIC function associated with the MESS package. So the QIC function in the MESS package can be used to generate the QIC and QICU. Uh, the QIC can be used to compare models with different working correlation structures to arrive at the preferred structure. The preferred model is the one with the lower QIC. And both the QIC and QICU uh, indices can be used to compare models to arrive at a model with the best subset of predictors. And so the better fitting model is the one with the lower QIC or QICU. Uh, there's a nice article by Kai where um, uh, the author basically suggests a strategy of using the QIC to first identify the best working correlation structure and then once that's identified then test various models with uh, various subsets of predictors in order to identify the best fitting model. So I'm just going to provide a really short demonstration. That article you can actually uh, go to the link right here and uh, learn more about uh, this particular strategy. And it's actually in the context of Stata as opposed to R, but it's still a very good uh, piece uh, and, and it provides some useful information. So we're going to go ahead and use the library function uh, to call up the mess pack. So uh, what we'll do is type in library and then inside um, our parenthesis mess and so it's ready to go. And so the first model you can see we're, we're basically just going to re uh, repeat our previous analysis with the first model and the second model right here. The difference is is that following both of those we have the QIC function and in reference to each of those models right here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in as well. And so you can see that in both cases we have our QIC values right here 
and QICU values right here. And so, you know, you can basically make comparisons between the models uh, in terms of de deciding on a working correlation structure. And then once you've done that, you can go back and then start to uh, evaluate different models with subsets of predictors in order to identify um, the better fitting model. So uh, information on the MESS package, you can find it uh, at this site right here. Um, specifically, they discuss the QIC function uh, on page 53. Uh, as I noted before, uh, Kai's article can be located right here. And then there's some other information on the QIC and QIC uh, U, which you can find um, at these links uh, down here. So at any rate, um, I hope you find this use video useful, and I appreciate you watching.